Okay, and we are live for the Power Chat series for the AmeriKick Internationals post show. I have on today the winner here. We have a winner of Katarina. Katarina, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm excited to have you on the show. Um, this is the first time you're coming on to the Power Chat series. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, the Power Chat series post show, we pick a winner at a tournament. And so they can speak on their experience as well as how they did. So let's just kick it off, Katarina. How did you do at the America Internationals? I had lots of fun at the America Internationals this past weekend in Atlantic City. Um, it was quite the quite the journey down there from just outside of Toronto and Hamilton. So it was about a 10, 11 hour drive. So it was definitely nice to finally get settled and get get going on the on the Friday. I competed in five five divisions for of um, all fighting. I did um, women's wacko, um, open weight, women's the open weight challenge, and regular NASCA open weight, and then grands and tall. I think I said that, but yeah, um, it was awesome though. I had I had a great time. Um, super awesome competition. The it was it was a fast paced fast paced atmosphere for for sure. Um, especially compared to some things we have here, but um, it was it was an awesome time. I felt great about my fighting. Um, lots of lots of good things I can also come back and work on. But it was it was really good overall. That's a lot of fighting divisions. Not only that they have to offer, but that you competed in. And what did you think of the different divisions that they have? Because there are some variations that you have to keep track of um, to an extent. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought it was awesome. Honestly, I'm, I love fighting. I'm a little bit of a karate nerd. So just anything fighting is right up my alley. It was, it was super cool seeing just the variety of, especially absolutely of just all the fighting divisions and even at, uh, um, they had clash, which was really cool. Cause I hadn't seen that before. Um, but it was, it was really, it was really awesome. Even just getting your variety of fighters who will come for your different different divisions like your wacko fighters and then your manaska fighters and then your women's but it was it was awesome just for your variety of, of competitors for sure what did the competition look like for the women's division who was very, there very versatile it was super diverse it was awesome to see honestly especially for for a women's division having competed for a long time um only being kind of limited to maximum four or five competitors at even the bigger tournaments but it was awesome there was lots of really talented fighters. Um, I think I was the only Canadian in the division, but quite a few Americans, of course, and some people from who came from Mexico, and I think someone from Venezuela, I think, but it was it was awesome really seeing kind of the different styles of fighting and just the really diversity in, in competitors. It was awesome. You mentioned that you've been competing for a while. Talk about your uh, martial arts journey. So I kind of started off with the WKC up in Canada. So um, started with that when I was seven, eight years old. When I was eight, um, I started in October and coming up on 10 years doing karate this October. So yeah, it's it's definitely been a big journey. I um, would definitely dabble in some NASCA mm -hmm. tournaments the past about 20, 2017 to 2019, but stuck with the WKC kind of world championships nationals up in Canada. And then there was two in Ireland, one in New York city in New York state and one more in Florida, which was super cool. Um, just stuck with worlds. And then this past year after COVID as well, figured may as well, since I've already done four kind of straight years of that, why not start kind of broaden my, my horizons a little bit with, your bigger kind of American NASCAR tournaments. And it's okay. been working. What did you say? And it's been working lately. So I'm glad I've been made that switch to more, I meant more NASCAR tournaments. How did you place at this most recent event at the American internationals? I, I felt really awesome. I won the 18 women, 18 plus women's open weight challenge up on stage, which was super awesome to be able to actually fight on stage again. Cause the last time I, ended up fighting on stage was what, 2017. So it was amazing to really get back there. I won the black belt tall division, 15 to 17, just in Asuka. I won the continuous division and in women's women's wacko and 
open weight, I placed second and was also happy about my fighting moves. A few little things started slipping when I got a little tired, but that's all right. But yeah, I felt I mean, really I would expect for, for anyone watching, that could be multiple, it's multiple divisions and then multiple fights within each division. It's not just like one, four, five divisions, right? It's, it's a lot. It takes endurance. And how did you prepare yourself knowing that you were walking in to fight a lot of divisions? Honestly, that's a that's a very good question. In the club, we cause I, I train with um, Trevor Nash and Casey Nash up at um, United in in Hamilton. So, um, especially when we get closer to our actual tournament days, we'll do more high intensity kind of ring sparring with judging, NASCA rules, really get kind of fighters circling in and out, getting that cardio up, kind of bringing up that intensity, even sometimes having some spectators, just to try to mimic that like tournament atmosphere as much as we can without actually being there. Apart from that, just fighting at tournaments, honestly, and that's what's been tricky with having restrictions for the past two years in Canada it's been really hard just getting comfortable in the ring without having real ring time but it's definitely been a little easier with getting back to full-fledged training with with partners and that's interesting that they have spectators sometimes to simulate that level of intensity is that something that you find helps or is this not something you pay attention to um i that's yeah I, I think it helps for sure i think it all depends on the person as well but for me it definitely helps um just kind of mimic that it tries to get a little bit more pressure on rather than just seeing it as if you were just in, in practice just sparring mm -hmm. um but yeah i think it all depends on what you think about during your fight as well because when i'm fighting i don't really think about anything kind of outside so it, it all depends, but definitely with, with noise and kind of energy coming from the crowd, it can definitely make a difference in being ready for that. And so it seems like you fought up actually for some of the divisions. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And how old are you then? I, I'm turning 17 this October. Okay, well, that is an amazing feat to be 16 years old, taking on the Women's Open Weight Challenge. People, I, I remember when I was competing, I just turned 18, maybe I was 17 just because of the age. And at the US Open, I remember seeing a woman fighting, I forgot who, it was Veronica. Um, and she had a baby at the time. And I was just thinking, oh my goodness, I'm fighting 17, I'm still like in high school and I'm fighting people who have the experience to have well, a, enough to have a baby. So, um, you know, an experience, it, it does talk and it does help. But for you, it seems like your talent and your training made you run with the best of them. Can you talk more about what prepared you as a junior to win this division? Well, I appreciate it. But um, yeah, definitely training partners. Mm. Um, having gone to United in the past two years or so, definitely that kind of higher intensity, just your training partners who you're constantly going to be seeing and, and training with and sparring with and just being used to that that pressure and that kind of... I don't want to say dominance in the ring, but that, that energy in the ring and how, even if you're, you're like, no matter how, you, what your size is, sometimes that doesn't matter. Like you need to kind of outthink the other fighter. So definitely for sure, having older training partners, mainly when I train, I train with one or two people my age. And then most of them are women and women and men, like who would be in the 18 plus division. So for sure, just, visualizing even matching up different training partners i would have had in in the club to similar people at the tournament so like oh this person who i'm fighting at the tournament it's just like fighting elise who i train with quite a bit at um at united and really appreciate her amazing fighting but yeah it's definitely definitely a challenge but training partners make a big difference i found at least can you talk about the experience living in Canada and having to keep up the competitive drive while competition and restrictions were were still up in, in place? Yeah, that was definitely very difficult. Um, a, a, a determination and kind of a dedication to just the sport was really needed in order to keep mm. passion for it, really. I found, especially for fighters, we didn't have even virtual competitions or 
any really opportunity to compete at all in the past, at least for in Canada for the past two years, two and a half years. So definitely just sticking at it, sticking with your basics and doing what you can. Why I just did online classes as many as I could. And that's really all I could do, honestly, like just keeping consistent with your stretching and your movement. So your body constantly kind of is familiar with those movements and you don't quite lose that muscle memory then yeah it, it was very tricky though for sure but it can be done it clearly it can be done now what is what were some of the takeaways generally speaking from this competition at americic oh that's a good question um definitely just some just some different like fighting tips some um regularities i guess in my fighting just have, having seen clips of how how my fighting will change based on the pressure of at a tournament or kind of in the club um but yeah i mean just kind of takeaways i i can't think of much more like just getting used to always kind of fighting how i did at the tournament then in the club so then continually feeling comfortable in that kind of high intensity and keeping that keeping that pressure on definitely just seeing what worked for me in the tournament and then reflecting that mirroring that perfectly in practice to then try to make that more more of a habit okay. and you said that you want to step more into the nasca space and the style can you talk more about that and your future plans with competition um i of course i love i love just kind of how they're how they're run how they're set up the preference for lots of different awesome divisions um but um i'm sorry and i'm so sorry you should repeat the question yeah no you're fine you mentioned that you started stepping into the nasca space more what what uh, led you to that and um wanting to um, stay there the the intensity of it the variety in competitors um i found that at a lot of at home tournaments um there would be the same couple of competitors as like every tournament but then mm. coming to, it was a lot of variety even just where are we going in 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 the country of in the usa where i'd be going and different kind of competitors based on what region i'm in which was definitely attractive considering the like competitive aspect of it um I really love to go to Diamond Nationals coming up in Minnesota. Minnesota, I've heard lots of awesome things, seen great, great fighting divisions over there. Um, but yeah, just kind of taking it one tournament at a time, um, but definitely hoping to keep keep on rolling with the five and six, kind of six, eight. Yeah, so speaking of that, you know, you can't go to every single one, especially given you're in Canada um, and various different, barriers to go to every single one on the tour what led you to decide to go to the america internationals Ooh, um i i really kind of looked at with most tournaments i'll kind of look at the divisions and definitely just kind of understand what i would want to do if i were to go um definitely started doing that with america once i saw it was kind of mentioned around the club um different coaches kind of suggested it um different people decided to go but um, yeah, I just really like the divisions that kind of they offered and I saw that there was an option to, for me to fight up as well as fight my NASCA division, which can sometimes, I think that's, that's not allowed in certain, in certain NASCA divisions. Yeah. Cause it's Waco that you can yeah. move up. Um, so definitely I wanted to, wanted to see if, if I could do that also with the prize being 2000 American, it was <laughs> a bit more of a more motivation to kind of push myself into that, into that women's category, but definitely the variety in, in divisions for sure. With all that money on the line, you're able to take, take that back home. What are your plans with it? Um, definitely probably a good idea. I definitely should give someone to my, my dad, who's really put a lot on the line just for my, my experience and my competing. Um, just, even gas getting us both down there and back like it was 11 hours on the road like that's <laughs> that's that's quite a bit and you know i think he deserves it a little bit so um definitely family members who have really helped me and just been really overall generous along my kind of marshal um 
treat myself a little bit, maybe buy some more karate gear, just, you know, keep it, keep it nice and relaxed, put a little bit of it away. Try to be, try to be smart with it, but definitely, definitely help some family out. That's so sweet to, you know, pay it, pay it back. I guess you would say to your, to your family, to your dad, because I mean, you're 16, you most likely wouldn't have been able to drive from Canada to America all by yourself. So, you know, that commitment is just, you know, I'm sure he, he wouldn't ask you for the money, but would appreciate uh, the thought. Yeah, Sorry, absolutely. what did you say? Very grateful for it, absolutely. Like his gestures and honestly everyone, like my my whole family, their generosity, of course. So, deserves to get Yeah, that's so, that's so sweet that that was your first answer. Cause there's some 16 year olds that are like, these new shoes that are coming out, which is totally valid to want to use your the work that you've put towards and earn. Um, but that was your first thought and it was family. And Alex said that you're a great competitor and you're super professional. And I could really tell that from this conversation. Well, I appreciate it a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. I might buy myself some new shoes along the way, but, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Now, you said that uh diamond nationals is next for you and how are you feeling that's my last question how are you feeling going from this big win to that next tournament i am super pumped i'm very kind of motivated to keep kind of, kind of that keep that streak kind of alive i'm feeling very especially kind of coming back from the tournament even on the drive home i was really excited to get back in the dojo get back training um keep keep that cardio up kind of work on the little little things I felt could have could have had improvements or just changed a little during training that I noticed at the tournament but definitely yeah awesome okay well I really had a nice conversation with you for the first time and most likely not the last for the power chat series and for the intern the American internationals post show and for everyone watching I really appreciate you coming on to the power chat series for this post show Awesome. Yeah. Thanks guys. I really appreciate the questions and it was, it was awesome. Definitely. Okay. All right. Have a great night and I hope everyone can take care. Absolutely.